Recording in progress. Every word of worship with one accord. Every breath, every breath, every breath, every breath, every breath, every breath is to our special guests that are uh, ministering with us this morning. So thank you. It's Cameron and Juanita. Did I say it correctly? Yeah. Originally got, got the right. Yeah. We'll talk after service. Yeah. <laughs> and, and so Annie, we love you. We appreciate you and everything that you uh, imparted, how you've impacted and imparted to this ministry and, you know, your family. Amen. From me seeing your kids at school and hugging and kissing on them at school. And who would like this man hugging and kissing on these kids in this school? And those are my kids, too. So God's strategic details brought us together. So we just want to be a blessing to you as we bless service. If we could pray, Lord, we love you. We bless you. We thank you, Lord. This is the meeting before the meeting, the service before the service, Lord. Praises have already gone up every praise. We love you more than anything. And we know that we are assuredly blessed because of you, Lord. Thank you for our sister Annie, Lord, all that she is, this ministry. Thank you for everyone in this circle. All that you led here for some reason, God, you got us together to partner with you. God, we can't go any higher than partnering with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So we thank you. We bless you. We love you, Lord. Pray a special blessing upon her, upon her life. Comfort her heart. Strengthen her heart, Lord, for the journey ahead. Encourage her, Lord. Remind her that she is an ambassador for Christ. And allow her to continue to move forward and minister with all of her gifts and talents pray a blessing over her her children, Lord, uh, Jesse and Elijah, Lord, that they will grow up, serve the Lord with joy, make an impact around the world, God, and we just thank you for that and the legacy of her father. We thank you so much, God. Because of you, God, all that you did in his life and all that he did in others' lives, what a legacy, what a blessing. So we thank you, Lord Jesus, and we rejoice. Crown of glory laid up for him, but not only for him, but all that take joy in the appearance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, bless the service, Lord. Uh, may someone get healed, get them set free today, God. Uh, in the name of Jesus, move, deliver, heal like never before. Thank you so much for all that you're doing here, all that you've done, and all that you're going to do. It's in Jesus' name we pray.
Praise the praises rise. Every praise, let praises arise, more than anything, and then blessed assurance. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Please stand with us this morning. We're going to open with prayer. We'd like to give traveling graces to our own Brandy, Sierra, and John, and Yvonne as they're on particular travels today. We'd like to thank our special guests here today with us. Cameron and Janae and Juanita Nelson Hopkins. We're going to go back to the children's church. Embrace this fact, I will experience the peace and contentment of God like never before. Holy Spirit, give me the insight to embrace my current situation and be content. Teach me your way in every situation in my life. Bring me to remembrance how I should live, speak, teach, act, behave, and respond. I know that honor, promotion, grace, glory, and life come understand that outside of you, Jesus, I will lead a frustrating and confused life. But in you, I will have peace and contentment. In you, Jesus, I will overcome every situation and circumstance that I am currently going through. I commit to embrace your instruction all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. In your bulletin, all the
to our God. Every word of worship and one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our
in the inside of me. Come fill my life from the inside, from the inside of me. Set me on fire from the inside, from the inside of me.
we wanted to raise, want the praises from our hearts. Throw. Want them to raise and rise like never.
Take your seats, and if you would, open your Bibles to the book of Acts, chapter 1. Would like, if we have any youth at this time, want to dismiss the youth to youth church. Acts chapter 1. If you're there, say amen. If you're not, say hold up. So grateful, so thankful, so blessed to be here this morning. So family, those of you that take notes, um, take notes, amen. amen. God's given me a lot, even before I got into the word this morning. I, I tell you guys all the time, God's always speaking, so I got notes on my notes, okay? Amen? I got notes on my notes, because God's always speaking, and we just have to make sure we're listening. So here's what God has been impressing upon my heart. We had the resurrection, so this is after the resurrection. Last week was after the resurrection, part one. This is part two. So make a note that the resurrection is the game changer. It's the life transform. Because of the resurrection, our life has to change. It has to be different, just like it was for the apostles. It transformed their life. When you understand the magnitude of the resurrection and the power of the Holy Spirit, your life has to change. Let me say it again. The magnitude of the resurrection and the power of the Holy Spirit, your life has to change. So as Christians, as believers, and we know in, it's, it's in any form of business or, or school or whatever you're doing, you have to know your why. Amen. Bless you. You got to know your why. Amen. Why do you want to grow closer to God? Why do you want to have a relationship with God? Why do you want to go back to school? Why do you never want to step foot in a school again? You have to know your why. Somebody say amen. So the resurrection is our why. Why do we do what we do? It's because of the resurrection, because Christ resurrected on that third day with all power and authority in his hands, in heaven and in earth. So why do I go out and preach the gospel? Why, am I, why is there such an urgency to it? Because I know that Christ resurrected and people are dying every day of the week. Take a look at Acts 1 and 3. I'm going to be all over the place, but you know that's nothing new. Amen? Speaking of Christ, it says, to whom also he showed himself alive. <laughs> this is after the resurrection. He showed himself alive. He presented himself alive after his suffering, after they saw him brutally beat and murdered he showed himself, presented himself alive with many infallible, and the word infallible means I had to write it down. I wanted to make sure I, uh, I got it. It's, it's uh, unmistakable. It's, he showed himself alive with evidence and facts. Amen? Let me say that again. So after Christ was resurrected, he showed himself alive with evidence and facts. Being seen of the disciples for 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So let me say that again. So, so wrap your head around this. They're looking at the resurrected Savior for 40 days after he was resurrected. And that word speaking, in the Greek, the Aramaic, it means he was describing, he was teaching and advising. So put it, make a note of that. So for 40 days, Christ is teaching, he's describing, and he's advising his disciples for 40 days after he resurrected. That'll change your life if you spend time with God like that. So what is he teaching them? He's teaching them that you got to go and teach the gospel around the world. What is he describing to them? That you're going to get killed just like me. But it's okay because you're going to resurrect just like you see me. So don't have any fear. You will resurrect to eternal life. What is he advising them? 
Don't stop. Obey God. Forget about what man is doing. You have an assignment. Take the gospel to the whole world. He's teaching, he's describing, and he's advising for 40 days before he ascends up. And what is he talking about? He's talking about the kingdom of God. That's powerful. So the kingdom of God, what's, what's the kingdom of God? Kingdom of God, it's, the kingdom means the, ro the royalty, the rule, the realm, the reign, the royal power, and the dominion and the authority of God. So his conversation is surrounding the kingdom of God. He's not talking about what somebody wore to church today, amen. He, he, he's not talking about, uh, he, he's not talking about the game, okay? Uh, he, he's not talking about what he thinks might happen. He's not talking about the culture. He's not talking about politics. He's not talking about who's running for president. He doesn't care about that stuff. It's about the kingdom of God. So let our conversation shift. And of course, you know, we can talk about other things. That's okay. We're not legalistic, right? We're not all weird like that, where you can't watch a game and you can't talk about politics. But you have to shift that conversation and talk about the kingdom of God. Ask somebody, do you know if you're saved? If you were to die today, do you know if you would spend eternity with Jesus Christ? Do you know that Christ will reign forever, that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father? You have to let them know that Jesus Christ split time in half when he resurrected. It went from B.C. to A.D., and there's a kingdom of God in my Father's house or many mansions. I'm going to prepare a place for you. you got to talk about the kingdom of God. I had to do a service yesterday at, uh, of all places, at Long Beach Poly in the auditorium, of all places. So it wasn't a traditional service. Some kind of way God opened the door for me to do the eulogy. Hey, man, I'm talking to Sister Annie when I'm driving over there. Annie, you know my assignment is to speak to the living and not the dead. That's what Sister Annie taught me. She said, Pastor, don't, when you go to those services, you don't speak to the dead. You speak to the living. So my standard line now is when I get up, I say my assignment as a pastor, when someone transitions, it's my job to speak to the living. Amen. Amen. It was all kind of stuff being said. Some good. You know at those funerals, man. Some, will, will, will somebody teach a class on funeral etiquette? When you got two minutes, number one, two minutes is two minutes, but it's just certain things you don't say. Oh, my gosh. Brother Danny, I'm sitting there, and it's all kind of foolishness being said. And, you know, the eulogy's at the end, so I'm trying to, I'm, I'm just trying to stay focused, like, oh, God, I hope I don't have to get up after that. Gosh, what is wrong with folks? Do they realize that someone has passed away? Do they understand the urgency of what's going on here? When I got up, all I could talk about was Jesus Christ talking about the kingdom of God. And not making it weird, somebody say Amen. One thing that bothers me as a pastor, when I go to a service and I'm sitting there and someone's giving a eulogy and they think they're at church, because everybody in that, you're in an auditorium at Poly, people don't go to church. I can't get up there, praise the Lord, saints, can I get a hallelujah? Everybody say, man, folks, it's like, what is he talking to? Is anybody real? Is anybody not weird that's a Christian? Amen? I got news for you. They were weird before they became a Christian, so don't blame that on God, okay? Don't blame that on God. They were weird before. Whatever they're doing, they were weird. They became a Christian. They're still weird. That's not God. That's just them. Amen? Amen. But I had to speak about the urgency of the gospel. And it wasn't long. You don't need, long, you don't need a long time to get up there and hit it. Boom. And sit down. Give the invitation. Only person that, I, I said this when Annie yesterday, the only person don't want the invitation at a funeral is Satan. <laughs> I'm asking, folks. I'm praying. Anybody want to receive Jesus Christ right now? Amen? Pray this prayer after me. Dear Lord, come into my heart. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for resurrecting. Thank you for your blood that covers all my sins. Right there in the auditorium. Speaking life. 
So we see in, in verse 3, Christ is speaking other things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Family, make a note. Let me, let me share this with you, too. L let's go to Romans. Um, let's go to Romans 14. This, this talks about the kingdom of God, so we don't get it mixed up. And, and I'm trying to stay focused. I told y'all I'm, I'm all over the place. But Romans 14. So in my, in my heading, my topic for chapter 14, it says principles of Christian liberty, principles of Christian freedom, because the Romans, they were trying to get legalistic. They were trying to, um, you know, dot every I and cross every T. And God said, well, you relax. So if you eat this and I eat that, there's a problem with you. He said, it's not, that's not the kingdom of God. So look at verse, uh, where are we at? Let, let, okay, I wrote it in my notes, all right? It's gonna, I'm, a, I'm going to get to the kingdom of God, but I thought this was important to share. Romans 14 and 5. It says, one man, one person esteemed one day above another, another esteemed every day alike. Let every person be fully persuaded in their own mind. So that could go to the Sabbath day. Because folks say, oh, you, you know the Sabbath's on Sunday. No, it's on Saturday. What? The word is saying, if, if you want to worship on Saturday, worship on Saturday. If somebody, somebody else wants to worship every day, that's okay. That's what they want to do. Don't try and put God in a box and you got it. God, that's not God. God is, is deep, but he's not complicated. So here it is, he's saying, if somebody wants to esteem a day, it's okay, cool. You said, that's, that's not me, though. But even in a relationship, let me, let me liberate you in a relationship, in a marriage relationship. Your wife might want to get, your spouse might want to get up and they study real early in the morning. Okay, I study late at night. Right? That's okay. We got to study together. We know. No, we don't. We don't. Right? It's, it's nice when we do, but you, it's not legalistic like that. Relax. Calm down. It's okay. Be persuaded in your own mind. What's the important thing? That you're studying, you're growing closer to God. And when opportunity comes, yes, you study together, but you don't. Man, I'm trying to watch the game right now. Is that okay? I'm not trying to study. Honey, relax. We got to, you know, it's 8 o'clock. We got to pray. No, the Lakers are playing right now, okay? I'm, I'm sorry, what a waste, right, Chucky? What a waste. <laughs> I'm sorry. The Clippers are playing right now. Honey, I, you know, uh, honey, and, and you know, and you can ruin a relationship with foolishness, with legalism, and not understanding Christian liberty. I'm watching the game. Okay, it's cool. All right, do your thing. So that, that's verse 5. Look at verse, what did I say? Verse 10, 10 through 12, still Romans uh, uh, 14. 10. This whole chapter is powerful, but I, I can't get into that, uh, the whole chapter, not right now. Okay, but why do you judge your brother, or why do you set it, or why do you discount your brother? For we also stand before the judgment seat of Christ. You know what? He's saying you got to take care of yourself. Pray for your brother. Don't disrespect. Don't put down your brother, your spouse, your kids. Pray for them. Everybody's going to stand before Christ. That's what we got in common. That's what we, we're equal. Oh, I love verse 11. For it is written, as I live, said the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. Verse 12. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. It's personal. It's a personal relationship. Amen? It's not where I was trying to go. So let's go to verse 17. That's where I was trying to go. It talks about the kingdom of God. It's talking about Christian liberty. Lighten up. It's okay. It's liberty. That's why I love God, because there's liberty. It's free will. God is not going to force you and I to love him. He's not. He's given us free will. He, God didn't create AI and robots. He created humans. And it's your choice to serve, love, sacrifice, surrender, and submit to God or not. It will not be anyone in heaven that does not want to be there. <laughs> if you've invited, you do not have to take the invitation. That is your choice. 
You live with it, you die with it, and as we just read, you're going to stand before God with it. But that is your choice. Thank God for free will. Verse 17, for the kingdom of God is not food and drink, because they are hung up on food and drink. So maybe somebody's a vegetarian, somebody's a vegan, somebody eat meat, somebody eat vegetables, somebody does this, they're on a the kale diet. So what? That's not the kingdom of God. Why are we, we argue over some of the silliest stuff. Of course you should eat healthy. Of course you should take care of the temple. You should exercise, you should do all that. But why are you arguing with folks? That's not the kingdom of God. Look what the kingdom of God is. For the kingdom of God is not food and drink, but it's living right and it's peace and it's joy in the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's what the kingdom of God is. What's the word peace in the, in the, he, in the Greek and the Aramaic? It's, it's quietness, it's rest, it's being blessed after death. Joy is the calm delight. And righteousness is just living right according to the word of God. That's the kingdom of God. Can you do that? I'm arguing with you about what you eat, and God says, I wish you would close your mouth, relax, number one. Calm down. How about you? Don't worry about them. How about you live right? And then you operate in peace, rest, quietness, being blessed, and then calm delight. And then you pray for them. How about that? Amen? That's the kingdom of God. Verse 18, for, in, for, for he that in these things serves Christ is acceptable to God. What's that? Peace, joy, right, living right, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. For he, that, for he that in these things serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved of man. By living right, peaceful. Verse 19, let us therefore follow after the things which make peace. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, here's that word peace again. I don't know, God is, 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 as I've been studying this, peace has come up time and time again. The quietness, the rest, blessed after death, casting all your cares upon God, calm down, it's already all right. And that comes through the Holy Spirit. That's the kingdom of God. Calm down. Let us therefore follow after things which make peace and things wherewith one may edify. So family, make a note. Practice peace in your heart. Well, that's because you have the Prince of Peace in your heart. Practice peace in your heart, in your home, and make it a habit. And then edify. That's the kingdom of God building each other up. Amen? So Jesus, let's go back to Acts 1 and 3. So that's what Jesus is telling the disciples. Don't get caught up in all the foolishness. Speak of the royalty, the rule, the realm, the reign, the royal power, the dominion, and the authority of God. That's what transforms lives. That's the game changer. No one else resurrected like Christ. And here's what God was for you. Those of you taking notes, think about this. Here's what God gave me too. The disciples' lives, lives were transformed. We all have, here we go, here's, here's what he gave. Here's a revelation. We all have issues from childhood and adulthood. Somebody say, man, I'm the only one. Okay, y'all gonna leave me hanging this morning. That's okay. All right? I'm cool. I'm cool with that. I understand it. Right? So God gave it to me, so I'm gonna give it to you just like, like he gave it to me. We all have issues from childhood. We can go back. Mama did this. Daddy did that. Uncle did this. This, that, the other. Whatever. And then we have adulthood, things that happened since the adulthood since we've been adults or young adults. But through the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, the, the disciples, it transformed their adult life. Let me say that again. And I'm not a psychologist, but I've, I've studied child psychology as a teacher, all that kind. So I know there's issues that we bring into life. But when they understood the magnitude, they spent time with Christ, and then the power of the Holy, Holy Spirit, it changed their, it transformed their adult life. Amen. So you can tell me what happened, you can tell me what happened as a, as a kid, you can tell me things that happened in the past. I get that. I'm not empathetic. 
Not, I'm not saying to discount that, but I'm telling you, their adult life got transformed because of the resurrection and the power of the Holy Spirit. Transformation. Luke was a doctor. You could be a driver. Matthew was a tax collector. You could be an accountant. Uh, Peter was a fisherman. You could be a fireman. It doesn't matter. The, the resurrection and the Holy Spirit should change your adult. It should transform your adult life. It should be a difference. Because of those two events alone, it should be, an, it should be a difference in how you live and how you operate and how you respond. Amen. Thank you for that one. Amen, Jerry. Family, you've got to understand the magnitude of the resurrection and the power of the Holy Spirit. You should be discerning and living with spiritual urgency. Let me say it again. You should be discerning. God, give me discernment like never before, and then I should be living with spiritual urgency because of the resurrection and the power of the Holy Spirit. My life cannot be the same. And, and, and just think about it, family. Um, as when I'm talking about discerning, and those of us who, you know, we're, we're, we're a little older, and they all say, hey, every generation is different from, but it's really something different going on today. If you're discerning spiritually, you see, this is not, it's not business as usual. We got to be on spiritual, all my military guys, we got to be on spiritual high alert every day. Amen. You got to be on spiritual high alert every day. It, the attack is real. Um, the struggle is real. Spiritual warfare is real. And if you are discerning, you see that it's, it's a little different right now. Spiritual high alert every day. You got to shift your mentality um, in into being a, a, let me make sure I get it right, a warrior and not a warrior. Amen? You got to get into warrior mode and get out of warrior mode. Got to operate according to, Jesus showed them the evidence. They didn't get all emotional. They weren't talking kumbaya and it's so good to see you. He said, this is the evidence I've resurrected. Here are the facts. Now go out and change the world, which they did. And he's telling us the same thing. Again with verse 3, get the visual in your mind. The resurrected Savior teaching the disciples about the royalty, the authority, the reign, the power of God for 40 days after he resurrected from the dead. So in verse 3, it says, to, to whom he also showed himself, so they saw him. He was seen. Amen? And then he was speaking. So he was seen. He was speaking. So our conversation needs to change because of the power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then look at verse 4. It says, and being assembled together, so Christ was with them. Make a note. They were together. Christ told him he would never leave them or forsake them. And if after he resurrected, he's still with them. Amen. Um, and make a note, God's with you and I. Amen. I don't care where you are in life. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it feels like. God is with you. It says where two or more are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst of them. That's Matthew 18, 20. It actually says we're two or three, so when we say two or more gathered in his name. It's Matthew 18, 20. Jesus said he'll never leave us or forsake us. He told them, he says, I'm with you until the end of the world. He told them after he gave them the great commission in, in Matthew 28 and 20, he says, and I'll be with you till the end of the age. But look what he said too. And being assembled together with them, verse 4, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait. All right, somebody uh, put a star by wait. Wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, 
and you have heard it of me. And we know that in, in verse 5, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, not many days after. So we got the resurrection, bless you. We got the power of the resurrection, and now you got the power of the Holy Spirit. Bless you. And he said that you need to wait. He commanded. Amen? So we got a commandment. He's commanding the first church. He's giving them the script. He's giving them the prescription. Uh, I wrote it down. He's giving us the, the formula, right? Um, uh, and, and, and the formula that we have, the fasting, the daily walking, our Proverbs, meditating on the word, um, begging God for wisdom, prayer, uh, that's, that's the formula for freedom. Amen. He's given them the formula for, for power. We have the formula for freedom. We have the, the script for sanctification. We have the prescription for peace. It's spending time with God. God's given us the formula, the prescription, and the script. He tells them to wait. That wait means to stay around. Stay around. God said, don't leave me. I know, I know it's tough. Um, Wait for the promise. The promise, what is the promise in the right here in the in the uh, in the Greek Aramaic? It means the blessing. So I don't know who's ready to throw their hands up on God and have been waiting for God and it's been too long, but God says, "Stay around for your blessing. <laughs> stay around. Stay. Stay committed to God. Continue to sacrifice, surrender, and submit daily to God." God says, don't, don't leave yet. And, and just think about if the disciples would have, um, would have left. Say, we, we, we got to go get, no, you got to stay. You got to stay. You got to wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit. You got to be led by the Holy Spirit. Stay around. Wait for the blessing of the Holy Spirit. You all know in, in, this, in this society, the hardest thing to do, this culture, is to wait. Amen. It is the hardest thing to do is to wait because um, everything is just instantaneous. Amen? It is. I mean, you don't even have to. We, we were trying to figure out dinner last night, right? And it's like, all you got to do is call. You make a call, boom, it's at your door in a few minutes. Amen? So why, why wait? Do not have to? Why cook? You know, cooking might take too long. Although, the, I'm not, I didn't cook, but. Tracy and Jail cooked, and it was better than anything we could have bought. Somebody say amen. But we had to wait. Amen? Um, and, and, and you all know it's, it's just it's a different time. Um, my, my, um, <laughs> and I know my, my mom might be watching, but anyway, it, it's, it's how it was. Back in the day, uh, we were talking, and, you know, they have cell phones now. We, we didn't. Amen? When I was in high school, if you had a phone in your room, you were the man or the woman. We had one line in the house, and it was 10 of us. Well, my older brother moved out, so maybe it was nine, eight or nine of us then. And I'm on the phone, and I'm going to say, since Tracy and I, we've been dating since 16, I'm going to say I was talking to her. Hi. Okay. So I was, I was on the phone talking to Tracy. This is old school, and Mama pick up the line, hey, you've been on 30 minutes, I'm waiting on a call, you need to get off. Come on, man. And you know what you did? Uh, I try, hey, Tracy, I call you. No, you're not. You're not calling back. You, you, it's 30 minutes. Your time is up. Get off my phone. I'm waiting on the call. Tracy, I'll call you tomorrow, okay? We had one phone with a couple of extensions. And if somebody called, they got a busy signal. It took mom a long time. She was not, she just got call waiting maybe last year. Okay? Son, if I'm on the phone, I don't want nobody interrupting me. But mom, we might be trying to talk to you about, no, you wait until I'm off. The hardest thing to do is wait. Somebody make a note. God is saying, just wait for the promise of the Holy Spirit. It, it, it was good, but it was rough growing up in the, in the 70s. Somebody say, man, it was, it was a good time. Things were a lot slower, but it, it got rough at times. Amen? 
look at, look at the promise. Let's go to uh, John 14. We've talked about this before, but it deserves repeating. I remember going to, on vacation and we forgot the, we forgot the, um, the camera. And we, man, we forgot the camera. This was years ago when Tracy and I first got, every time, it never failed, we go on vacation, we forget the camera. Who's gonna take pictures? We can't take so we have to, this, this was before disposable cameras too. So you just, we having a great time, no pictures. Now you got your phone, you got your video recorder, you got your, you got your, your computer, you, got your, you can check your emails, you got your, your phone number one, you got your flashlight, you got your tape recorder. What am I, what am I missing? What else you got? You got your watch, your calendar. Hey, Chucky, I was in, in the class this week, and a kid asked me what time is. I said, look at the clock. Said, I, yeah, couldn't tell time. Nikki couldn't tell time. She said, I don't know how to tell time. Then the other kid put out his phone, so it's like 1.15. Sister PJ, what are we doing? We got these phones. We losing it, family. We slowly but surely losing it. And then you read the scripture, and God says, wait. You say, I don't have to wait on nothing. It, 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 it's No, because it's right here. And with our, our son living in New Orleans, you ain't getting nothing. New Orleans is a throwback because you ain't getting nothing. You cannot be in a hurry to do anything, maybe except for eat, okay, because they got plenty of food. But if you're trying to get any paperwork, anything done in New Orleans, it's so frustrating because, you know, in California, you make, especially L.A., Southern Cal, you make a few calls and, okay, we'll email it right now. We'll, and you, okay, cool. And next thing you know, the emails, that ain't, that ain't gonna have, that ain't gonna happen in New Orleans. That ain't never, the 12 years he's been out there, that ain't never happened. They not in a hurry to do nothing. Amen? Maybe that's why they're so, so nice. That Southern hospitality is real, though. Oh, baby, just wait. Sit down, baby, it's coming. How you doing, baby? Uh, no, I'm tired of waiting. I, I'm not doing too well right now, okay? And, and then they tell me, out of all things, you're not from around here, are you? <laughs> uh, but that, that's not what you think. I said, oh, no, I'm not. You say, yeah, we could tell by your accent. Oh, come on. I got an accent? Yeah, have you heard yourself talk lately? <laughs> Tell me I'm not from around here because I got an accent. Oh, I didn't heard everything now. Did I have an accent? No, I guess. Anyway, whatever. That's a John 14 and that's a 26. But the comforter, the helper, the paraclete, which is the Holy Ghost. Oh, God, Jesus. Whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. Family, when you understand the magnitude of the resurrection and the power of the Holy Spirit, it will change and transform your life. Teach you all things and bring all things to remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Then look at verse 27. He's, after he's resurrected, what is he talking about? Peace. Calm down. It's already all right. And then here he is even before. He says, peace, I'm going to leave with you. Amen? And the word leave, he said, I'm going to lay aside. I'm going to leave it right there for you. It's up to you to tap into it. He says, I'm leaving it with you. The quietness, the rest, the blessed life. And then he says, my peace, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives unto you. And the world, make, it, make a, a note, it's, the world is the, the orderly system of deception. All right? So it looks like it's, it's chaos and it's out of control, but when you look at it in the Greek and you break it down, it's an orderly system of deception. That's why I say you're not going to get no peace from that. Because just when you think you arrive, the world will make you think you need something else. Outside of God, there is no peace. Not lasting, not eternal. Temporary, yes, but you all know that, that, you, that burn, you get burned out of that. He says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world give it, don't get it twisted, give I unto you. And the word give, he says he's extending it, he's granting it, and he's delivering it to you. So he's laying it aside, and then he's extending it to you, he's granting it to you, it's free, and he's delivering it to your door. 
if you choose to receive it. So that way you can be a warrior and not a warrior. Because Christ says it's, it's the peace that comes from God. Get out of the world. You're in it, but you're not of it. Don't get caught. We're here to minister. We're here to take the gospel. We're here to talk about the kingdom of God. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world give unto you, give I unto you. Then I love this. Let not your heart be troubled, right? Ooh, I had to look up troubled, so I need to know what. He says, let not your heart be anxious, stressed, doubting, and confused. So, so the opposite side of that coin, if I flip the coin and I'm, and I'm into the world and not into God, I'm always anxious, I'm stressed out, I'm doubting about everything, and I'm confused. Who is God speaking to this morning besides me? Calm down. Don't be anxious. Don't be stressed. Don't be doubting and don't be confused. Christ is resurrected. That transforms my life. When I understand that, the magnitude of the resurrection, that everything Christ said is true, and he proved it when he resurrected, spoke to the disciples, taught them, advised them, and described to them what was going to happen for 40 days before he ascended, that has to change my life. And he said, the Holy Spirit is coming. The power of the Holy Spirit is coming. And now it's in us, and we have to tap into it. Pick up the peace. It's laid aside. Receive it. It's extended. It's been granted. It's been delivered. And then calm down. Stop being anxious. He tells us, uh, Paul tells us in um, Philippians, what is that, 4, 4, 6, be anxious for nothing. Calm down. No, no, no. So, and, and this is a practice, family. That's why we're practicing Christians. Had a conversation with my mom not too long ago, and she said, son, growing up, I wasn't a practicing Christian, but now I am. Somebody say amen. amen. This is what we're practicing. God's not looking for perfection. God is saying, practice for me every day. Amen. Remind yourself, let the Holy Spirit bring to your remembrance the power and the magnitude of the resurrection and the power of the Holy Spirit that lies within you, and then practice the peace of God that passes all understanding. Practice talking about the kingdom of God, the royalty, the rule, the realm, the reign, the royal power, the dominion. Practice talking about that and sharing that. And practice not being all legalistic and wound up and worried about what people are eating and wearing and all that kind of stuff. Calm down. Practice. If you, if you practice, you get good at it, whatever it is. If you want to be an idiot, practice being an idiot. You will be an idiot. There's no question about it. You can. So I tell the students all the time, man, you can be, you can practice being an idiot and you will be one. You can practice living right and you will get better at living right. Amen. Hey, man, it's a journey. It's not a sprint. It's a journey. It's a marathon. I practice every day. And I got to take my walk and I calm myself down because I feel myself getting anxious and stressed and doubting and confused. I take my walk with God just like Adam did. Said, Adam, walk with the voice of God. God is still speaking, but if you're not walking, if you're not meeting, the voice of God is always speaking, waiting for us to calm down and take a walk with him. Family, let not your heart be troubled, neither be afraid. See, we're winding down. Go with me to John. Um, let's go to John 20, and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll wrap this up, and we'll table it. For the visitors, pastor never finishes a message. That's why we just will continue it next week. Look at um, John. Uh, where do I want to go? John 20. Did I say John 20? Look at 26. We talked about this, but look at, I mean, I'm just, God is speaking loud and clear. John 20, 26, he says, after eight days, again, his disciples were within. They're gathered together. Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and he stood in the midst of them. And what did he say? This is after he resurrected. This is eight days after he resurrected. He told them before, now he's telling them after. 
Calm down. The resurrection has power. The Holy Spirit has power. It is the game changer. Look at uh, John 21 and 12, and I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping it up. Jesus said unto them, come and dine. It's an invitation. Jesus said, will you come and sit with me? Jesus desires to dine with us today. Jesus desires for us to tear up that busy schedule and make time, practice making time to dine with Christ. He's inviting us to build a relationship with him. Jesus said unto him, come and dine. Come sit down and dine. None of the disciples uh, did ask him, who are you? For they knew that it was the Lord. Let's go back to Acts 1. We'll wrap it up. I'll share two things and then we're, we'll table it to next week. Acts 1 and 7. He said unto them, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath, has put in his power. Make a note. That power right there. Um, talking about God, that's the, in the Greek, that's the exousia. Uh, and it means authority. So God doesn't have to tell you. They want to know, are you going to come and restore this? You still don't understand it. That's not your business, what God has in his power. Then he tells in verse, in verse 8, but you should receive power. And then that's the power. That is the dunamis, which is the strength and ability. That's what you need to understand, that we have the power to live for God. Don't try and figure out what God is doing. Tap into the power of the Holy Spirit so you can understand what you should be doing. It's two different powers he's talking about. You don't have that authority, but you have the strength through the power of the Holy Spirit. The magnitude of the resurrection and the power of the Holy Spirit should transform your life. When we surrender, submit, and sacrifice to God, those two events, as it trans transformed the life of the, dis the disciples, it will transform our life as well. And the rest we'll pick up next week. If you would, bow your heads. Let's just spend a little time and family, I really want you just to meditate on our Lord and Savior, a resurrected Savior, the magnitude of what that means. It means that we do know what happens after death. Just like Christ resurrected to life, we're in Christ, we resurrect to life. We do know have to catch myself. I used to say, well, no one really knows, but that's a lie. The lie Satan wants us to tell that no one really knows. What we do know Christ resurrected. He split time in half. That's the magnitude of the resurrection. We do 